and welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara O'Brien. Joined this week are Ed Byrne, Tom Allen and Ria Lena, Rhys James, Hugh Dennis, and replacing Angela Barnes, who has taken ill at short notice today, Maff Brown. We start tonight with a round call. If this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Ria, which category would you like? Politics, please. Excellent choice. Your topic is politics. The answer is 1%. What is the question? Is it the percentage of the school year my kids have actually been in school? <laughs> <laughs> is it how many germs are completely happy with Domestos? <laughs> <laughs> Is it, what are the chances Math didn't poison Angela Barnes? <laughs> it's not fair, man. It's not fair. Just to say, Math, because uh, Angela did follow with it. She got a high temperature in the afternoon and then under the current, in the current climate, let's say, decided the better thing to do was to step down. Yeah, we send best wishes to Angela. I hope she gets well soon. And yeah. further, that she hasn't made the rest of us ill. Uh, that's <laughs> impressive in that. Math, however, would normally be doing the warm-up on the show and has stepped up at very little notice to join us. Math, welcome. Good to have you here. Thank you. I'll do my best. Uh, so, anyway, we're talking about the 1%. What is the question? Is it how much of Matt Hancock's DNA is identical to humans? <laughs> <laughs> is it how much of the crown is actually true? <laughs> <laughs> That is scat. You're right. That is the most outrageous thing that's probably going to get said today. <laughs> okay, is, is it how much battery does Boris Johnson claim he's got left when he gets a call from Chris Whitty? <laughs> 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 is it how effective is the COVID vaccine developed by mums, which is just an early night in a glass of water? <laughs> <laughs> is it what percentage of people who buy the sun can actually read it? Oh. <laughs> How many people who have voted for the Green Party have realised that, ironically, they've just wasted paper? <laughs> <laughs> is it how much of Giuliani is still alive? <laughs> <laughs> is it how much of an opposition has Keir Starmer actually mounted since he became leader of the Labour Party? <laughs> Is it, uh, is it how much notice was I given that I was going to be on the show? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it uh, how much of the Mock the Week hair and makeup department's time is spent on Dara's hair? <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't say this because I'm new, but I was in makeup with Dara and she like pritz sticked his head. Do they add hair? They know, they think. <laughs> <laughs> They don't rub Pritzig and then, like, roll me in something. They don't Is it, uh, what are Rhea's chances of being asked back on the show after that haircut? Yeah. <laughs> well, you didn't I'm taking all the boxes here. You need me, yeah, all right? No, no, no. We, we, we get a grant and everything. Uh... And I get a passport, so it's a win-win. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is the correct answer, please? It's, uh, what percentage of the boxes do I tick? <laughs> 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 Yeah, the least diverse panellist in the world. Yeah, that's true. Well, right now, I think I'm probably representing the elderly, so that's... Yeah. <laughs> OK, it's uh, how much of our Zoom audience will still be left at the end of the recording? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the real answer is, what percentage of the country will be in Tier 1 under the new Covid regulation? That's absolutely right. Thank you very much. Oh. You guys. Yeah. The question I was looking for was, how much of England's population has been placed under the lowest Tier 1 level of coronavirus restrictions? This is the news that mm -hmm. the national lockdown ended at midnight last night. It was replaced by a tough enough version of the tier system. 99% of the country found itself <laughs> under Tiers 2 or 3, while just Cornwall and the Isle of Wight were under Tier 1 restrictions. What's the point of being in Tier 1 on the Isle of Wight? It's still the Isle of Wight. I mean, what are you going to do with your freedom? Pop to the local well and wish you were in London? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> the tears, I mean, they, 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 I mean, they're not... The discrepancies are, are both too small and too wide. The tears are essentially pubs are open, pubs are open if you're hungry, and sorry to hear that you have died. <laughs> <laughs> Substantial meat yeah, is the catch. 
crazy at the moment. Like Scotch egg, that's all you need. Is Scotch, yeah, yeah. is Scotch egg a substantial meal? Is the, is the key? Apparently, it's only a substantial meal if it's served with table service. Which, if that be... is the definition of a substantial meal, none of my children have ever been fed a substantial meal by me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing with the Scott Jakes is, is that you have... So, if you wanted to order, like, a round of shots, you'd have to order, like... Scott eggs to go with each shot. Imagine that at the end of the night, like, right well, there, yeah, got us 12 Scotch eggs. Yeah, come on. Do you slam your Scotch egg or do you... I think you have the shot, right? and then and then you bite into the Scotch egg and go, oh, it takes the taste. <laughs> do, it like a, uh, do it like a Jaeger bomb and dissolve it like a Baraka. Oh, that's <laughs> the yeah. Yeah. Drop the Scotch egg. How old? <laughs> yeah. When, when people talk about their hangovers now, it'll all be in terms of how egg-bound you feel. <laughs> be like, uh, oh, man. Oh, I hit it hard last weekend. It's Tuesday, I still haven't had a shit. <laughs> <laughs> We're so obsessed with pubs. This whole this is a pandemic, and all anyone talks about is, yeah, can I go to the pub or not? That's the whole, that's the, the, the whole debate. The whole. Not once have I seen an infographic telling us how many households we're allowed to be in a library with. But <laughs> yeah. never has there been. There's not been an angry tweet saying what they're shut in the museum at ten. <laughs> this is disgrace. Uh, also, being city and country, um, does, have you heard about this? Uh, what the, the difference between the urban environment and the rural environment? Exactly, and how the rural environment is the people in, in smaller villages and towns are angry because the cities in their county is what's causing them to be too. Oh, three. yes. Bromley, where I'm from, uh, basically, for a time, it's like, oh no, we're London now. We're basically London. All the houses are London prices. And then suddenly everybody's like, no, we're leaving London now during the pandemic. Like, oh, we're Kent. We're actually Kent. <laughs> and now Kent's gone into <laughs> tier three. Everyone's like, no, we're London. We're London. <laughs> we're London. <laughs> People in rural pubs don't want people from highly infectious cities yes. to go there, do they? And that is, that is essentially just returning to the old days, isn't it? Because rural pubs have never been that welcoming, have they? Whereby you, you just walk into it and people go... <laughs> 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 yeah. The big day to watch over is 16th of December. It's when this will all be reassessed. 16th Again. of December is oh. when the... Tear results, are, you'll know because you'll open the papers and there'll be pictures of blonde girls jumping in the air holding their results. <laughs> We're at tier one! Uh, yeah. But the A-level results. Boris has been teasing that the whole time, hasn't he? Yeah. He's been teasing, like, oh, tier three might become tier two. It's a bit like a COVID cabaret. Tier three, tier two, tier three, <laughs> oh. tier two, tier one! Um, yeah. <laughs> it's not your destiny, people. On the 16th of December, all tier three areas must nominate two young people who must then go to the Isle of Wight as... <laughs> an offering. <laughs> <laughs> what are the recommendations that they made in terms of behaviour at Christmas? Uh, they've said if you are caroling, everyone needs to face the same way when you're caroling. Right. Um, as opposed to all those caroling gangs that <laughs> like to <laughs> meet up and then scream carols at each other as they approach each other from opposite ends of an alleyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good King Wences, last look down. <laughs> <laughs> You've assumed sensibly that you mean everyone stands in a row this way. It could be that they all stand facing in one direction in a queue Ooh. and they only infect each other. Oh, I didn't, oh. oh, yeah, you're absolutely oh. right. Yeah, you know, just that one person at the front they, going... <laughs> what if you answered the door to carolers and they were all standing in a line and they all kind of did that, you know, went that way, <laughs> yeah, went that, that way, way sort of thing. <laughs> 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 They should have, can they all do that the hand? They can yeah. do the hand thing. Yeah. Well. Do the hand oh, thing. Oh, I love yeah. that one. Yeah. You're also you're not allowed to play board games. Board right? games are out. Board especially, games. Uh, especially Risk. That's one you're not allowed. To <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, imagine. Imagine Cluedo would probably be an unfortunate one. Uh, it was oh, it, turned out, it was Professor Witty with the COVID <laughs> at the briefing. Uh, <laughs> I was looking forward to buying the new. Uh, there's a new version of Monopoly where you're only allowed to buy or operate anything if you went to school with Boris Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Recommendation of board games. This is what the, I don't understand. They said, please don't play board games. There's lots of pieces, you know, that you can spread COVID between. We're like, how are you playing Scrabble? You're not literally supposed to lick the letters to stick them <laughs> on. <laughs> no, you're just supposed to put your hand in that sack of germs. <laughs> Most of it around. This. Everybody, everybody ready to Here play? Everybody ready to play? <laughs> everybody ready to have a good game of Scrabble here? I've got, I've got a C, an O, a V, an I, <laughs> and a D. Yeah. I think it's when they start. The game, they're taking it too seriously and just spitting their hands for the handshake. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they do that. <laughs> people, why, why did people do that, Matt? I think uh, it's to seal the deal. It's to seal the deal. But, but, to what, but why? But was... I'm not as rough as I look, Tom. I don't know. <laughs> I assume, I just, Angela would know. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of that round, the point's going to Matthew and Reese. <laughs> Matthew.
Now we play a round called Donald Dumped. This game <laughs> involves Math and Tom. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launch the wheel of news and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. OK, here we go. Our first topic, please. Let's spin the wheel. And the first subject okay. is fitness. Who wants to come in on that? Math. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I'm probably not the only person in lockdown that put some weights on. I think I put about two stone on. So I'm trying to do something about it. And I'm starting, I've started doing some running. And I bought myself some, uh, you know, the running tights, the leggings. And <laughs> I went for a run in my local park the other day. And the amount of women that just stared at my crutch. None. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cut a hole out tomorrow and make it worth it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I, went to, I went to the gym this morning, actually, and then afterwards I had a protein shake, although some people call it a wank. <laughs> <laughs> but I have. I have. I've started, uh, I've started looking after myself better. I've started cooking properly. I've started cooking with coconut oil. Well, Malibu, same thing, innit? <laughs> 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 and I've also discovered you've got to be very, very careful offering a fat person a Kit Kat Chunky, cos they can take that the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter how you say it. Do you want a Kit Kat Chunky? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter, they just get upset. Cos I spend my life on the road. Normally, when we're doing this for a living, you know, you go out and I, I go to a lot of restaurants. I went to a really rough restaurant the other day. This is how rough it was. Ordered a lamb shank, got stabbed by a sheep. How rough is that? <laughs> <laughs> And the drinking as well, the drinking in lockdown, that was a lot, I did a lot. So I sort of stopped that now. Now I only drink on special occasions, like people's birthdays, on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Matt. Thank you, well done. <laughs> that leaves us with Tom. Let's see what your topic is. Let's spin the wheel. And it's leisure. Oh, how did they get that photograph of me? <laughs> um, <laughs> that is how I spend my leisure time. Uh, leisure time, I think, is most stressful when you're a child. I remember the only time you did anything you liked was basically uh, when you went bowling. I remember, say it was someone's birthday, like Ryan's birthday. You'd have to go round to Ryan's house, and Ryan's mum, Anne, would answer the door. Anne was having a very stressful time. She'd say, come in, come into my house, take your shoes off. You spend most of your time as a child putting on your shoes and taking them back off again. <laughs> Which was always very stressful for me because I didn't learn to tie my shoelaces until quite late. And I remember my parents saying to me, what are you going to do when you grow up if you can't tie your shoelaces? And I'd always say, duh, espadrilles. <laughs> <laughs> Still had to come out. Anyway, Ryan's dad would be taking you to the bowling. Now, this was a time when it was completely fine to transport 15 children in one stranger's car. <laughs> there'd, be, there'd be three of you sellotaped in the front, <laughs> 10 of you in the back, all in shell suits. I mean, if you went over a speed bump, you could rub together, you could catch fire. <laughs> And as a treat, two of you would have to travel in the boot. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd say, it's all right, it's all right, I've taken the parcel shelf off so you can breathe. But remember, if you see the police, get down! <laughs> it's completely fine to say to children. And then you get to, like, the mega bowl, you get out of the car, you'd have to run up the stairs, and then you have to take your shoes off again. You have to take your shoes off again to go bowling. I don't know why I bothered putting shoes on at all on this day, right? And you all know, you have to take your shoes off to put on the special grandma shoes that you have to wear to the bowling, because the bowling has got the precious wooden floor. You cannot tread on the wooden floor without those shoes. You cannot do it. It's a special, magical wooden floor. And then it would dawn on you, you had no idea how to bowl, because you were nine years old and you weren't rowing. Suzanne Barr's husband, and so... <laughs> this, I thought you were trying to prove something, so you'd pick up a ball that was far too heavy for you, then you'd drag it, drag it, drag it to the end of the lane, lob it into the middle of the lane. It would immediately go into the gutter at the side, and that would be the end of your experience of bowling. And I remember thinking, even then, why is this floor so precious we cannot wear outdoor shoes on it, but it's completely fine to take a 15-kilogram marble and <laughs> smash it into the middle of it! <laughs> Thank you very much, Tom. Our next round is called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what's happening. So, what's going on here? <laughs> is she getting ready to record her version of Yes, Sir, I Can Boogie? <laughs> <laughs> source of the leak that a scotch egg counts as a substantial hit. <laughs> <laughs> Is this Nicola Sturgeon retraining in cyber? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like she's going, oh, Sue! 
This guy has now changed his relationship status to it's complicated. What the fuck is that about? <laughs> is she watching her favourite film, E.T., and trying to touch his finger? <laughs> <laughs> She's going SNP complaints line. No, I'm afraid Nicola Sturgeon isn't around at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Is she pointing at it and going, oh, that's where my picture comes up? Oh, great. <laughs> Is she just Googling how often can something happen and still be considered once in a generation? <laughs> <laughs> She's reading an article. She says, oh, it says here sturgeon eggs are worth a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> They will wear tartan in any colour, won't they? <laughs> <laughs> That's the colour of porridge, how dare you? Saying hello, I'm just gauging voter intentions on Scottish independence. I'm putting you down as a yes, don't argue, bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the correct answer? Is um, th that that is Nicola Sturgeon. That's all we needed, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Great <time. laughs> Yes, of course. It is Scottish First Minister Nicola Sturgeon who addressed the SNP's annual conference this week. What was her message to the SNP? Independence is, is, yeah. is a matter of time. It, it is. It's imminent. Imminent at any moment. She's just waited till now, till England are busy. Boris won't even know that she said this and that they're going to have another referendum. <laughs> it's basically like waiting until your parents are having an argument to ask if you can use the car. <laughs> <laughs> It's fair enough, though, isn't it? Because they didn't... The Scots didn't vote for Brexit and they didn't vote Conservative, so it's nice to give them a chance of having one thing that they have voted for. <laughs> <laughs> stop, stop letting the public decide stuff. Have we not learned? Stop letting the public decide stuff. If there was a referendum <clears throat> tomorrow called Pub or Nan, Guinness would sell out in 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> What I'm saying is, we need a referendum. <laughs> uh, so, yes, uh, so it, it was supposed to be a once-in-a-generation thing. When was the last one? Four yeah. years ago. Was it? it wasn't four years. It was 2014. It was six years ago now. Um, which, which sounds not that much, but, like, last March was eight years ago. Uh, <laughs> so it is... <laughs> Yeah, I'm all for it. My two New Year's resolutions were get Scoxit done and coin a new political word. <laughs> <laughs> is, there, is there a sense, though, that we might all then start, like, dividing off, and if Scotland goes separate, and then all the different tier areas of England could start dividing up? I mean, Kent is suddenly its own area, now Cornwall's its own area. We could all end up... Suddenly I'm going to be living in the People's Republic of Orpington. <laughs> <laughs> you could be king. Oh, then I love it. Then I love it. <laughs> then I love it. <laughs> I mean, you're not me, actually. I love this. I love this. But we're going to be queuing everywhere as well, aren't we? In Kent, the queues on the M2. Oh, we're going to that's queues... to get into blue water. We just love it. We just <laughs> love blue water <laughs> so much. They're really, really worried about the lorry drivers, and presumably there'll be border, you know, things in yeah. Scotland as well. He's dogging. They're really worried about that. And I'm thinking, <laughs> well, I think it's just good to have spectator sport back. <laughs> <laughs> I'd imagine if you had to put fake crowd noise on the dogging. I mean, where is, where is the authenticity in that anymore? Would the uh, commentator have to apologise for bad language halfway through? <laughs> I mean, imagine the VAR on dogging, just seeing if it was in or out. <laughs> Did Nicola Sturgeon maybe think to herself, let's, let's really start the drive for independence again now, because surely, by now, the people on Mock the Week will have run out of jokes about Scottish independence. <laughs> and, <laughs> and she'll be absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, some of us weren't on it six years ago, so let me take it away. Meanwhile, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's going on here? He looks like he's in the most high-tech toilet on the planet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, is a, that is a toilet roll behind him there, isn't it? Is he upgrading Matt Hancock's software? <laughs> <laughs> Is this the episode of Repair Shop where somebody's brought in the economy? <laughs> <laughs> is, is this how he's trying to get money for the furlough scheme, just looking down the back of stuff? <laughs> <laughs> is this... He's saying, uh, my other cash machine is my wife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
is he, is he saying, OK, look, it was a bit racist of you to assume I'm the IT guy, but weirdly, I do know how to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> is, he going, is he going, washing machines really do live longer with cow gone? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is he just trying to one-up and shit with David Cameron and having a hard drive? <laughs> <laughs> has, Ri has Rishi Sunak uh, entered robot wars? Oh, no, that was cancelled, wasn't it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was out of order, Ed. Has he entered blockbusters? <laughs> oh, no, that was... Uh... <laughs> all right, all right, go, let it go. <laughs> Turn back time. Turn back time, that went. <laughs> yeah, that uh, family Brain Games, that went. <laughs> One season. Dara and Ed's Driving Adventure, right, they went. That track. wasn't my fault. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'll take a punt at Leprechaun Boys. <laughs> <laughs> Over the years, surely that's come up. <laughs> I mean, it, it got to a document stage. Uh, <laughs> yeah. we're gonna... we did a pilot. Yes, it is Chancellor Rishi Sunak, who this week delivered a spending review setting out what the government will spend next year. What is the bad news for the UK's finances? It's going to be the worst recession since 1709. Yes. Which Jacob Rees-Mogg personally remembers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sorry, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm sorry, and we're trying to have a conversation here. Look what the Zoom crowd is doing. What the hell are you all up to here? The, this is... You're doing... <laughs> <laughs> Way I admire you for doing it, but I really, really admire the man in the corner who refused to take part. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> who could see the wave approaching him for ten different rows and went, no, I'm not doing that. I feel sorry for everyone who watched last week and then spent loads of money getting a weapon thinking you were asking for that again. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round, the boys go to Ed, Tom and Ria! <laughs> Now we come to scenes we'd like to see, so if yes. everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics, and then we'll see what our panelists can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject tonight is... Unlikely lines from a TV detective show. No, it's not a murder, he just died. <laughs> You're going away for a long, long time. You've clearly used up all of your annual holiday. Have a great trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it does sound like a lovely trip to Alton Towers. They just sort of meant call me if you remember anything about the case. <laughs> <laughs> Why does the chalk outline have three legs? Oh, that's not a leg. <laughs> <laughs> Impossible, Detective. It couldn't have been me. On the night of the 22nd, I was at home cleaning my murder weapons. <laughs> ah. This is Tango Charlie. OK, my mistake. I'll get you a Pepsi, Charlie. <laughs> ah. And was there any ID on the murder victim? Great. Oh, today's date. It's their birthday. Get their arms. One, <laughs> two, three! <laughs> OK, I'm going to go in there and do the interrogation as normal. Then you come in, ask me which motorway I took to get here, sneeze very loudly, and then tell me things were done differently in your day. Classic good cop, dad cop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from the SWAT team. <laughs> <laughs> I've had enough. Turn over your badge. I've always been curious to know what the back of those badges look like. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Can you just... Whoa, can you speak in Norwegian? It makes it more gritty and then people don't realise the acting's actually shit. <laughs> 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 yeah. There's uh, semen on the bed sheets. There's blood on the walls. Maybe we should move hotel rooms. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you say can and will be held against you at any time. What do you mean, why? Cos I'm your wife. <laughs> Unfortunately, the murderer's latest victim was a teenage girl. It's believed her last words were, ''Ugh, can you not?'' <laughs> 
Okay, so we've got hair samples, we've got scrapings from underneath the fingernail, we've got a bite mark, and that's why I'm sending this pizza back. <laughs> I've got an artist's impression for you, boss. <laughs> the next topic is unlikely lines from a romantic novel. She collapsed slowly in his arms. He sighed and reached for the puncture repair kit. <laughs> Oh, pretty, he said. Bully me like one of your civil servants. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make love, she said, but not here, upstairs. And with that, they climbed to the top deck of the night bus. <laughs> <laughs> she turned to her husband and said, Let's try role play tonight. So he said, Sure. What do you want to do? She said, I want you to pretend you're the Prime Minister. Oh, you're into power? No, I went to get me pregnant and fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing edible underwear, she teased. He ripped off her skirt. Um, yeah, I think generally that's supposed to be candy. It's just <laughs> I'm, I'm not really in a spag bowl mood. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, he said, licking cream out of her belly button, I'll remember to put the lid on the blender. <laughs> As he climbed on top of her, Melania thought to herself, remember, he'll be dead soon. <laughs> <laughs> she smiled at him across the mattress. Aren't we lucky, she said, to have found a skip with one of these in it. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like a scene from Romeo and Juliet, except I didn't take the poison and now I'm wanted for murder. <laughs> Two thousand a year, Mr. Darcy. Why, that's an awful lot of women. <laughs> <laughs> she took him by the hand and led him up to the bedroom. He couldn't believe it. She was about to make his deepest fantasy come true. He was going to get to have sex. <laughs> <laughs> Go! Leave me! I cannot stand another minute in your presence. I could never love a man who thinks it's funny to superglue a woman's hand to her forehead. <laughs> <laughs> Anastasia walked towards the wall of chains, hooks and rope. A huge hulk of a man stepped in front of her and said, Hi, I'm Jeff. Welcome to being cute. <laughs> <laughs> he said to her, Will you make me the happiest man in the world and introduce me to your fit sister? <laughs> she knew she was being wooed, and now she told him to piss off. She was being very wooed indeed. <laughs> <laughs> As he climbed under the covers, he couldn't believe what he saw. A beautiful woman with long blonde hair, big green eyes, and a perfect body tattooed on the arm of a plasterer called Dina. <laughs> <laughs> I came as soon as I got your message. Richard was dreadful at sexting. <laughs> <laughs> he got down on one knee. Will you marry me? He asked. She flushed. Oh, you should ask my father first. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't fancy him. <laughs> he kissed her tenderly. She looked in his eyes and said, do that thing you know I like. And he went downstairs and restacked the dishwasher properly. <laughs> <laughs> the end of that round, the boys going to end. Tom and Ria. the end of the show. This week's winners are Ria Lena, Tom Allen and Ed Byrne. <laughs> Commiserations to Reese James, Hugh Dennis and Matt Brown. <laughs> I'm Daryl Green. Thank you for watching. Good night. 
She's black, she's gay and she's on her way. Navigating Hollywood behind the glamour, meet Hattie and friends in BBC Three's comedy, Twenties. Uplifting young people with real conversation, Young Bloods podcast. No shame, no judgment. Download BBC Sounds now.